Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhina astafa khususan ala afdalihim mukhatamin nabiyyin Muhammadin al-amin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd We begin with Allah's blessed name we praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified and we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the blessed prophet muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you from the studios of the islamic broadcasting network ibn here in my native island of trinidad in the caribbean with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, it has been more than three weeks now that uh, Saudi Arabia has launched an attack on Yemen, uh, a bombing attack so far, and uh, has mustered up a coalition of like-minded, like-minded states with Egypt, uh, Sisi's Egypt, part of it. Uh, the government of Pakistan daily wanted to, con to join with that, with the with the Saudis, but the people of Pakistan said no, and embarrassed the Saudis by saying no. The government, the parliament voted unanimously not to accept the request of Saudi Arabia for Pakistan to join in this attack on Yemen. Uh, the Security Council of the United Nations then imposed uh, an arms embargo on uh, the people of Yemen who are uh, the target of the attack from Saudi Arabia. Uh, it was something shameful on the part of the United Nations, uh, the Zionist United Nations organization. And there uh, are several questions that we have to ask Russia. Very, very pertinent questions we have to ask Russia. Why did Russia uh, abstain in the vote, knowing that if you abstain, the United Nations of which you are a part is now going to uh, impose the sanctions, uh, arms embargo, sorry, on the Yemeni people. Um, my uh, response to this event of the attack on Yemen uh, is based on eschatology or El Mu'akhir Zaman. There are political scientists who are more qualified than I am to offer a political analysis of the subject. Uh, mine is eschatological and I devote attention to a hadith of the Prophet Wasallam in which uh, he, he gave to us a triangle of Akhiru Zaman. And my brief talk to you today is on that triangle. A triangle is a figure with three corners, three corners in it. Uh, in one corner, he said, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina, our sham, our beloved sham. Sham is Syria. Uh, Sham also includes Palestine and so on. So he prays for Allah's blessings on Sham, which is most of all Damascus. And then he says, Allah mubarak lana fi Shamina wa Yemenina. And he also prays for his Yemen, his beloved Yemen, and asks for Allah's blessings on Yemen. One corner of the triangle is Sham, the next corner of the triangle is Yemen. And both Sham and Yemen have very important roles to play in Akhir Zaman. For example, Damascus. It is in Damascus that Imam al Mahdi will be present. And he will be about to lead the Salat, the prayer in a masjid. And Imam al Mahdi is a very important important person in Akhir Zaman, or the last age. Outside the masjid is Dajjal, followed by 70,000 Jews from Isfahan wearing their Persian shawls. And Dajjal is a very, very, very important person of Akhir Zaman. The fitna of Dajjal, said the Prophet, would be the greatest fitna that mankind will experience from the time of Adam salam, to the last day. And so the ulama of Islam have an absolute duty to be teaching and explaining the subject of Dajjal, 
from the member, Juma after Juma, because this is the greatest fitna of all. Not only do you have Imam al Mahdi in Sham, in Damascus, and have Dajjal also present at the same place in Damascus, in Sham, when the Imam is there. But number three, the Nabi Isa alayhi salam, Jesus returns right there, the same spot where the two of them are there. So three, the most three important event people of Akhir was a man all in Sham. All in Sham at the same time. And so this corner of the triangle is of absolutely supreme importance, Sham. And this is the corner that he refers to, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, as our sham. Our sham. Shamina. What about the other corner? Yemen. He refers to it as our Yemen, therefore our beloved Yemen. This also is a very important corner. Why? Because one of the signs of the last day, major signs of the last day, is that Yemen has a very strategic role to play in Akhiru Zaman. A fire is going to come out of Yemen, said the Prophet ﷺ. State Department in the United States not going to like this at all. Oh no. A fire is going to come out of Yemen. Britain and France can do what they want, they can't stop it. A fire is going to come out of Yemen and drive people to their place of assembly for judgment. Those who have been traitors, betrayed Islam, join with the Anglo, the Jew, Judeo Christian Zionist Alliance, which Allah had prohibited. Do not turn to such Jews and such Christians as your friends and allies who themselves are friends of allies of each other in a Judeo-Christian Zionist alliance. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ And whosoever from amongst you turn to them with friendship and allies, you belong to them, you no longer belong to us, you no longer a part of the Ummah of Muhammad wasalam. So those people are going to be driven by this fire which will come out of Yemen and taken to the place of assembly for judgment. Oh, this is lovely language. MashaAllah, this is lovely language. I love it. So Yemen has a very important role to play in Akhiru Zaman. And those who have been traitors to Islam, they have to be scared of Yemen. Because it's coming. The fire is coming. The fire is coming because Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, prophesied that the fire will come. So both of these corners, the corner of the triangle that is Sham and the corner of the triangle that is Yemen are of absolutely strategic importance in Akhiru Zaman. What is the third corner of the triangle? The people ask, O Messenger of Allah, what about our Najd, Najdina, our Najd? Today, when you ask people about Najd, they have forgotten. They don't know what is Najd. The term has disappeared like the term Constantinople, disappeared. Why has this happened? When the Prophet himself used a name, it becomes Sunnah. Why change it? This is sinister, that you should change a name used by the Prophet والسلام, like Constantinople, like Najd. The reason why the, the young Turks, the secular young, the godless young Turks of Turkey changed the name of the city from Constantinople to an old name of Istanbul is because they wanted to get the people to forget the prophecy of Muhammad 
that in Akhiru Zaman there will be a Muslim conquest of Constantinople. And that conquest of Constantinople will come after the Malhama. And the Malhama has not as yet occurred. We are so happy with this hadith because we know that from this hadith we know that when the conquest of Constantinople takes place, the Russian fleet will be able to pass through the Bosphorus into the Mediterranean. And hence this hadith allows us to recognize that Russia will survive the nuclear war which is coming. That's why they changed the name of Constantinople. They don't want us to remember that name. That is why they prohibited the use of the name of Constantinople in Turkey. But you can do it in Turkey. You can't stop me. No. Tell the Prime Minister that you cannot stop me from using the name Constantinople. And you cannot st stop the Ummah of Muhammad from using the name that the Prophet himself used. You cannot do it. The name that he used was Constantinople. La taftahanna al Constantinia. You will most certainly conquer Constantinople. Wala ni'mal amiru amiru ha wala ni'mal jayshu thalik al jaysh. And he praised the commander and he praised the army. This is the hadith. Similarly, they changed the name. And they gave a new name, a bogus name that they took out of a garbage bin and they called it the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Why? So that you will forget the word nudged. That is why. That is the reason why they coined the new name of the place as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And I'm talking now to the Saudi people. I pray that Allah may take my words to the Saudi people, many of whom are listening to me, many of whom have their hearts in the right place. The Saudi people, the people who live in, the, in, in Arabia. The reason why they changed the name and brought this new bogus name of Saudi Arabia is so that they can banish the word Najd. Well then, what is Najd? The Arabian Peninsula is divided into two main parts. On the eastern side of Arabia is the, is the part of Arabia called Najd. And that's where you have the oil fields, that's where you have Dahran, that's where you have Riyadh, the capital city. And on the western side of Arabia, which is bordering the Red Sea, you have the Hejaz. And in the Hejaz, you will find Makkah and Medina and Jeddah. This is how it has been from the time of the Prophet والسلام, and for centuries and centuries and centuries before that and up to the time when these people changed the name. Why did they change the name? Why did they want the world to forget the word Najd? The answer is because when the people asked the Prophet about Naj, sallallahu ta'ala wasallam, he did not reply. For this one he said, Allahumma barik lana fi shamina. For this one he said, Allahumma barik lana fi yamanina. For this one he's silent. Ominous silence. Ominous silence for Naj. Why? Then when they ask a second time, O oh, oh Messenger Allah, what about our Najd? Our, our, our Najd they're talking about. If a people in Medina ask about our Najd, which Najd would they be referring to? Here we now come to the parting point between Proper scholarship and bogus scholarship in Islam. Proper scholarship. Authentic scholarship. Honest scholarship. Scholarship with integrity. Scholarship with common sense in it. Would know that when the people in Medina are asking about our Najj, they are asking about the Najj which is next door to Hijaz. That Najj is what they are talking about. Bogus scholarship, fraudulent scholarship, scholarship which is betraying Islam, 
That is a scholarship we'll look for not somewhere else in Iraq or maybe in Disneyland. The time has now come with the Saudi attack on Yemen for us to expose you as bogus and fraudulent as scholars of Islam. And I pray that Allah kindly grant that these words may travel far and wide. That the world of Islam may open its eyes to be able to recognize bogus scholarship, fraudulent scholarship, those who insist that najd, to which the people were referring when they asked the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, what about our Naj? That the people were referring to a Naj other than the Naj next door to Hejaz in Arabia. That they were referring to a Naj somewhere in Iraq or somewhere in Disneyland. That's bogus, that's fraudulent, it's shameful. You should be ashamed of yourself for this bogus scholarship. When the prophet answered, this is what he said, pointing to Naj. He said, from Naj, there will be fitna, test and trials for the people. And that's what we now experience. And earthquakes, and earthquakes are not only physical earthquakes, you have political earthquakes as well. You have monetary earthquakes as well, like the petrodollar monetary system. And he said about Naj, the corner of the triangle, the third corner, he said, Karn is shaitan. Karn means a horn. But Karn also means an age, a period of time. Methodology, that is proper methodology, is to go first to the Quran. And when we go to the Quran, we find that every time that Allah uses the name, the word Qarn, He always uses it to mean an age or a period of time. And He has never used the word Qarn to mean a horn. And so we conclude that when the Prophet said about Najd, the third corner of the triangle, that this is Qarn of Shaitan, we say that's the Satanic age. So this corner and this corner, Barakah. And that corner, the satanic age. So why are they hiding it? Why this bogus scholarship telling us that Naj is somewhere in Iraq or in Disneyland? Why, 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 why? The answer is because this, the unholy Saudi Wahhabi alliance, which has hijacked the world of Arabia, and taken Arabia into the hands of the Zionists. That unholy alliance of the Saudi family and the Wahhabi movement has come from Najd. It is Najdi. It is Najdi. At the same time that the body of Fir'aun was discovered, in 1898, and Allah says in the Quran, about the body of Fir'aun. Al-an, wa qad asayta qab, wa kunt, wa ba'da uzu billahi min al-shaytan yujim. Al-an, wa qad asayta qab, wa kunt min al-ghafirin. Fal-yawma nunajjika bi badanik, li takuna li man khalfaka aya, wa inna kathira min al-nasi an ayatina la ghafilun. When the body of Fir'aun is rediscovered, when it resurfaces on the historical process, then history will repeat itself. لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً There are people who live the same way you live will die the same way you died, Fir'aun. And so the body of Fir'aun being discovered meant that the countdown, the last countdown of Akhir Zaman had commenced. And precisely... Four years after the body of Fir'aun was discovered, this, the Najdi Saudi family came and took Riyadh in 1902. The same thing happened in Paris when the conference took place to plan the collapse of the Ottoman Empire in 1902. 
The Zionist movement was created in 1897, just, just about the same time that the body of Fir'an was discovered. Six years after the conference in Paris, the Ottoman Khilafat collapsed and the Sultan was deposed. And now a godless secular Turkish young Turks take over the Ottoman government. Hmm? So this is not by accident that in 1902 the Saudis came and took Riyadh. And the Karno Shaitan now begins. A Saudi Wahhabi alliance is Karno Shaitan. They have brought the age of Satan, the satanic age. This is the triangle of Akhiru Zaman. And now that they have come out from behind the Parla, behind the hijab, to attack Yemen, we say that this is the beginning of the end of Saudi Arabia. And the Zionists are now planning the collapse of Saudi Arabia so they can replace it with something worse than Saudi Arabia, namely ISIS. But at the end of it all, the attack on Yemen, in which so many of our people are becoming shuhada, so many are becoming shuhada because of your cowardly attack on them from the air. You're too afraid to come on the ground to fight them. No, you're cowards. And the people of Saudi Arabia will not fight their own brothers. No. So the Saudi family is bombing from the top. And you, you, as you bomb the people, and innocent people are killed, they become shuhada. And those who are doing the bombing and going to the hellfire, we say, this is the triangle of Akhiru Zaman. And from this will emerge the fire from Yemen, prophesied by Mah. Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, which will liberate the Arabian Peninsula and drive them to their place of assembly for judgment. And we can't wait for that. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may bless those who now resist the attack and the aggression on Yemen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim. Wa tub alayna ya mawlana inna ka anta tawwab rahim. Bi rahmatika ya arhamur rahim. Ameen.